Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Dari Allen, author of What's Wrong With Me. Dari, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Are you ready to get started? I am. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Well, I would say to pace yourself when it comes to your funds <laughs> and when it comes to your team and the resources you're going to need. So resources for, you know, money wise and resources as far as human resources, because um, you may be like me. You might hire a project manager, editors, uh, photographers, maybe someone to index the book, depending on what kind of book it is, and definitely a proofreader and a graphic designer, at least one. So um, that's all going to cost money. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you pace yourself when it comes to your monetary resources, as well as finding your human resources for your team. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Well, it's a little bit of an offshoot from my last answer with the, the funding and um, hiring people. Um, I feel like the saleability and the marketing of your book really hinges on being able to recruit and afford contractors or consultants that will help you to produce a professional quality work that you could be proud of, especially if you're, I'm coming from the self-publishing world. So, you know, if you have a traditional publisher, then you won't have to really worry about a lot of these things. But for someone like me that self-published, uh, created her own company and all of that, um, it's going to be a little bit, um, challenging sometimes to find just the right people uh, to be on your team, especially if you do it piecemeal the way that I did. Um, there are, you know, author marketing houses and, and places that will help you, you know, put everything together. But I had to do it piecemeal. Um, you know, some people will say that they'll have something done at a certain time and it takes way longer than what was promised. Or maybe something was spelled out in the contract and, you know, you get to working through things and talking with them. And, you know, there's some great areas. So um, you want to test your referrals. Um, the more you have, the better. Um, cause I had a lot of disappointing experiences with some of the people that I hire for this book. Um, my first book. Yeah. It's funny how that works because you're absolutely right. Four years ago, I published my first book. We just got done launching book number 15, but that very first book, just like you mentioned, had to piecemeal the whole thing. There was no real infrastructure. And fortunately I just got really lucky. So I found an amazing editor, someone who's in my network, and she's edited all 15 of my books. So I've been very lucky wow. with that. And I got lucky with, with the uh, formatter. We, we just, you know, I saw the reviews. She did a great job, and she's done every one of my books, and now she does the majority of our books for our clients. But um, I will tell you, it was a little bit of research, but I believe it was a whole lot of luck as well. But it's one of those things when you talk about preparation and luck kind of being connected with the uh, more preparation you do, the better luck that you have. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in my case, talking about my first book, you know, um, I, like I said, there were some disappointing experiences that I had. And most of those people, not all, but most of them were people that friends refer to me. Mm -hmm. So like I said, test your referrals just because one or two people say this is a great person. Make sure that you really do your research, like Paul said, because just because, you know, you hear that they're good and you see one thing, you know, in their portfolio that you like doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, jive with you. Well, it's, it's great that you mentioned that, too, because we've had a couple people on the show recently and they did not have the best experiences with publishers. And the main th connection was the fact that the people that they used were people that were recommended by friends. And, mm. you know, that's one of the biggest things, even though someone refers them 
do your research. One of the things I always talk about before I add anyone to my team or any strategic partner, I ask one very simple question, and that is, what are your core values? And if they cannot answer that question within five seconds, I will not work with them because that clearly tells me that there's someone who doesn't live by that and therefore just are not a fit for what we're wanting to do. Yeah. Yep. Truth. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launches that has worked well. Oh my goodness. I have very, very fond memories of my book launch parties. I love, love, maybe it's because I'm an extrovert, I don't know, but I love um, doing book launch parties. It could be, you know, a lot of work as far as planning them out, but, you know, if you get some ideas, there's lots of articles um, from, you know, author marketing blogs about how to do this, but basically, um, I had a couple of different parties at different places. Uh, One place I had was at a restaurant, another place was um, at a place that is like kind of like a a bookstore, but it's like a super independent bookstore, but they also do like different events where they would have celebrities come and do readings of their books and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, I want to be a part of this. Um, And so I had people that would answer questions based on the book's theme and topics. Um, I had a couple of readings and with one of my books, there were actually uh, people that I referenced in the book with pseudonyms, but I had the real people come out and read some of their parts. Um, And of course, food, like it all else fails. You know, you tell the people that they're going to have food and drinks and they're going to (laughs) come. I even did a Twitter chat simultaneously with the discussion questions for the people that were gathered there at the party and the Twitter chat was going at the same time. So other people could get involved, even if they, you know, couldn't be there live with us. And I love that you mentioned that. So that is something that we did with our business book. So we launched a book over the past month called the get published business book. We had 75 people as part of that project. So each person did a chapter sharing their experiences. And the cool thing was half of the people that we recruited were based here locally in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington area. So what we did was we actually did a book launch party at Texas Live, which is a huge entertainment district here in Arlington that's right between Cowboys Stadium and the Rangers ballpark. And we had over a hundred people at this event and it was great. We had an author panel, we gave away prizes. It was just a ton of fun. And then we had such a good time with that. We were actually doing a, a book sign-in party this time over at the Chamber of Commerce because many of our people that are in the book were, are part of the Chamber. And at that event, we're actually having food. We've got a good friend of mine has this wonderful um, Lebanese restaurant called Prince Lebanese here in Arlington. They're providing food. Another great company I've worked with, um, Salsa Brothers Coffee. They're actually providing the coffee for it. So it's one of those things where you make it almost like a party and you really Mm -hmm. show people the big picture. And the great thing is it's all about the authors. It's about them, but it's also building relationships and getting people to come out and support the event. But it's such a funner way to do things than just the regular old book signing. Yeah, uh uh-huh, for sure. Um, And, you know, that area that you're talking about where you are, um, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Arlington, um, my cousin has been living there for many years, and he was the reason that one of my my second book got written, um, as a matter of fact, and he recruited a few people to be in it. So uh, we have a strong connection to the Dallas, Fort Worth area. Yeah, and and it's such a cool thing. I mean, any areas across the world, you you can have you can create these partnerships to have these type of book launch parties. I'm just so happy that you mentioned that because this is episode 389, and we've only had a handful of our guests that really talk about the book launch party because I really do feel that is one of the best ways to one get the word out get a little marketing, get a little advertising, get some promotion, but also to have fun with this and to make it more of a community type of event. Another thing that we did too is we actually live streamed the entire author panel on Facebook. So it's a great way, Uh, I know you mentioned Twitter as well, just a great way you can combine the best of both worlds for people who might not necessarily be able to be there. uh Uh-huh. This was pre-Facebook Live, pre-Periscope, pre all live streaming, but you're absolutely right. That is a great tip. And if I could do one thing differently, I would probably do a press release about the party beforehand and and get even more people there. But yeah, it was very, very, very fun. 
Well, excellent. Well, speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? I have a really hard time with just having one favorite book, but what I'm going to do is just tell you about one book that um, I read a few years ago that really stuck with me. And so it's not my favorite book of all time, but I don't really have a favorite book of all time. My favorite book, I guess, is whichever one I'm reading right now. Um, So there's a book called You'll Get Through This by Max Lucado. And um, he really talks about the fact that whenever you go through hard times in life, that all you have to do is think about what you're thinking about, like have really good thought management, because uh, just because you think about something doesn't mean you have to like sit there and marinate on it and meditate on it all the time. Um, And that's really, really key when it comes to situations in life where you're worried or you're stressed out. So I feel like it's a beautiful evergreen book. Max Lucado is a pastor, but I think that even if you're not religious, you can still get a lot of great, great tidbits from it. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? I am going to quote the wonderful financial expert, Susie Orman. Um, There's a couple of things that she says all the time. And one of them is do what's right, not what's easy. And The reason why do what's right and not what's easy is so important to me. It really serves me well as a life coach. It's one of my many roles. Um, And when I talk to people on my podcast, uh, most of the time, you know, change is hard and change is pretty much a constant, right? There's always something changing. Um, And sometimes you have to push through and make an effort knowing that there is going to be an effort. So doing the right thing is not usually the easiest thing. It's not always the easiest thing. Some people want to take the path of least resistance, but you have to know that growth is on the other side of your discomfort. And it applies to so many situations we have in life. It doesn't matter if it's personal or professional. So that's a quote that has stuck with me for a long, long time. Excellent. Well, Dorea, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Well, uh, if you want to use social media, um, my handle is Dorea Allen everywhere. So if if there's no Dorea Allen there, I'm not on that platform. <laughs> um, and if you are interested, um, if you're interested in uh, my voiceover work, it's DoreeVoiceOver.com. If you're interested in my podcast, it's KickingItWithDoree.com. And thank you very much, Paul, for letting me talk with you and, you know, spill my little, my, my, my quick little two cents and my gems right quick. Dorit, thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com.